I've abandoned my child! What's up, it's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Gilla Band album, Most Normal. So from Dublin, Ireland, girl band, now known as Gilla Band, is a noise rock post-punk band. And they have been making music for a while now, except for some reason I haven't really heard their music until last week. So what happened last week was that I was frequenting rateyourmusic.com and somebody on that website recommended me an album and that is this album, Gilla Band's Most Normal. And I didn't even know that you can do this on rateyourmusic.com. I didn't even know that you can just straight up recommend people music like that. But anyways, I checked out this album and damn, I like it. When I saw that this band and this album is under noise rock and post-punk, I'm already like, okay, holy crap, I need to listen to it. I need to listen to it. I am a sucker for noise rock and post-punk. I need to listen to it. And um, let's just say that this album is a pleasant surprise because I freaking ended up enjoying this album a lot. The album starts off with the gum, with the droney industrial opening, with screeching distorted guitars, spamming percussions, and distorted screams. It doesn't sound pleasant at all. It sounds muddy, thick, and scary. At some point, it almost kind of gets kind of glitchy, and then halfway through the track, it transforms into these deafening grooves, and it's really catchy and really unhinged at the same time. This album intro sounds like a dance club in hell. Now, a lot of people listening to this album may immediately draw the line between this band as well as Daughters, because if you don't know this, in 2018, Daughters released You Won't Get What You Want, and that album is kind of one of the biggest reasons why I love noise rock in the first place. And this album opener, The Gum, is almost kind of like City Song off of that album. You know, droney noise, it's deafening, it's unsettling, and then it becomes kind of catchy in the middle. But that being said though, I still love this track a lot for what it is. And of course every time I film myself, someone has to be outside. We move on to the second track, Eight Fivers, where it's basically nothing but drums and spoken word, except the spoken word are very expressive and loud, especially with the frontman going, I spend all my money on shit clothes, shit clothes. And it's kind of funny, kind of existential, and it also builds up to a very noisy second half where it gets really crushing and demented and crazy. And then we are followed with the very catchy backwash with a muffled drum beat and these sliding cycling guitars that are very catchy and snappy, sort of like a parquet court song, except it's noisier. And the lyrics on this track almost detail a schizophrenic breakdown in the perspective of the person who's having that breakdown, especially with the rhyming choruses, a nick, a knack, a prick, a prat, something like that. And then we have the track Gushy, which is one minute and nine seconds of noisy drone with thick static noise. And there are some really lush futuristic synths buried underneath, but they're so buried over such thick noisy distortions that you can barely hear them. And this track in and of itself doesn't sound really all that great, but in contrast with the next track, it is really, really different because the next track is a cut and dry banger. Yeah, it gets noisy, but it starts off really dry and crisp and HD. It almost works as a hip hop track because the flow of the vocals on this track just works really well. The crunchy drums are fantastic, and I just love how this track builds to another chaotic climax with some really tormented screams. I like the lyrics about self-care, especially underneath such a tormented instrumental. It's just so freaking unhinged, and I just love that kind of stuff. And this track is easily one of my favorites on the entire album. We are followed with the track Cop Graw, which is about 555 seconds of extremely aggressive screaming, but then these screamings would get audibly small and quiet, and then we would get some spoken word on top, which seems kind of random and out of place. 
Um, but then we are hit with the track The Weirds, which is the longest track on the album and nearly seven minutes long. We have a pounding drone, which sounds really unpleasant and noisy. It hurts my ears. But then at two minutes and 45 seconds, uh, it just evolves into this dizzying, disorienting beat where the frontman of the band almost impersonates Michael Girard of Swans with the very charismatic and suave vocal performances on top of tormented instrumentals and the track also has a very minimalist ending which is really nice then we are hit with two tracks that i believe are the two most normal sounding tracks here i was away is like a pretty normal post-punk song with some noisy embellishments here and there i really like the hooks they are very catchy in my opinion i was away i was away 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 it is hooks like this that really reminds me of uh, Alexis S.F. Marshall's performances on Daughters. So I can, again, I can totally see why people would find this album similar to Daughters. But but still, the track itself is great. I like the clickety drumsticks and the riffs are really sticky as well. Um, Almost Soon is kind of like the previous track. It's definitely one of the more normal sounding tracks here, minus the chorus. The chords in the chorus, however, um, and the verses, um, they don't change all that much. I wish to see more change. The track Red Polo Neck definitely has one of the oddest instrumentals on the album. We have some glitchy malfunctioning synths like a robot breaking down. We have tickety drums and we have vocals that are so heavily manipulated it honestly doesn't even sound human at this point. Pratfall is kind of like a pop song, completely slathered in distortion and noise. It's really unsettling, it's really weird, and I like the sound of it, but it doesn't have to be this long. It could have been a short interlude and it, and it would have worked totally fine. But the album ends off really solid with the track Post Ryan, which is in my opinion a banger ending with a buzzing intro. And the buzzing of this track is so real that I almost thought my laptop was overheating when I listened to this track. And uh, we have the repeating refrains, I'm just the same prick. And then these ascending and descending buzzing tones on top of a simple 4-4 beat. It's really catchy and it's also a really crispy, clean way of ending off a very noisy and slathered and messed up album. So uh, yeah, overall, I think sonically, this has got to be one of my favorites of the year so far. If there's one thing I'd like to say about this album, though, is that I want to see them be even more different because a lot of people make connections between this album and Daughter's music, and I can totally see why. Um, but um, this album still stands on its own. I think Gilliband definitely has their own style. Their disorienting production and their noisy uh, embellishments are definitely very amazing and tasteful and I really like that. I just want to see more experimentation on their part, more versatility as well. But still, I still really enjoy this album. It's definitely one of the coolest things I've heard all year so far. And I'm giving the new Gilla Band album, Most Normal, a strong 8 to a light 9 out of 10. So if you listened to the new Gilla Band album, if you wanted to know, just rate it, like, like it, and subscribe. One more, and thanks for watching. What the frick?